This is our first video for section 6.4 covering the binomial theorem. Um, before I get into the binomial theorem, I am going to briefly cover summation notation. So if you are very familiar with sum summation notation, you can skip forward to slide four, uh, which is understanding the binomial theorem. So before we dive into the binomial theorem, like I said, I want to take a look at sigma notation or summation notation. Hopefully you're very familiar with it, um, but if not, here are the basics. When you have something that looks like this, this is obviously sigma, sigma tells us to find the sum. The value on the bottom and the top, the I stands for index and is really just a counting procedure. The M tells us the lower limit and the whatever you have up here is going to be the upper limit. And then whatever happens here is really just going to be each value of the series. So if I have this particular series, A sub M, A sub M plus one, notice that it started at M and then it's increasing by one each time all the way until we get to whatever our upper limit is. So again, the I is the index and we could use any letter, sometimes K, sometimes J, but a lot of times you're going to see it as I. And then again, the um, term here doesn't have to be A sub anything. It could be, um, you know, two to the two times I could be what we're doing. And so then it would be two times five and then plus two times six and so forth. But if it's A sub anything, that's just saying that particular value or place in the sequence. So if I have the summation as I goes from five to nine of A sub I, really it's just saying A sub five, A sub six, A sub seven, A sub eight, A sub nine. And you're just going to add those together. We're going to take a look at some properties of summations. We are not going to look at the formulas right now. We will can look at those later, but right now I just want to look at a few properties that may come into play as we are learning um, our new material. So the first property is if I have a summation where I have some constant that's being multiplied by a value, it's the best idea for us to go ahead and take that constant out to the front. So instead of five times one plus five times two plus five times three plus five times four, again, going from one to four, I would just take one plus two plus three plus four, and then that value would be multiplied by five. So much easier. Uh, the second property is if you have, and I want you to notice here in the second expression, there is no I inside um, so we're not taking the summation of I or of anything. So we're just saying we're adding X four times because it's from one to four. So it's just X plus X plus X plus X. So that property says, hey, if you don't have your index anywhere in the problem, you can just take whatever you have here multiplied by this value, assuming that you're starting at one. Um, the reason I point out starting at one is right here you'll find quite often that you have an index and you want to start an index at one or you want to start it at zero. So you need to be able to know how to manipulate those. So this tells me I squared, um, the index from one to four of I squared. So one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared. Let's say I wanted my index to start at two. Notice I can add one to each of those. So now it goes from two to five. But by doing that, I now have to subtract one from I so that it's um, equivalent. So two minus one is one, so one squared. And then three minus one is two, two squared. We get the idea, it's going to be the same. And I can also go in the opposite direction. So if I subtract one, then I get I goes from zero to three and notice then I would have to add one here. So zero would be zero plus one or one squared and then add one to get one. So one plus one is two squared and so on. So those are just some properties that will be helpful for you moving forward. One last thing before we take a look at the binomial theorem and that is just to develop some understanding of what we're actually going to be doing with the binomial theorem. So here I have x plus y quantity squared and x plus y quantity cubed. 
We'll start with the x plus y quantity squared, which is of course x plus y times x plus y. Now, everybody hopefully knows how to FOIL first times first. Outside, that's plus xy. Inside, that's plus yx, which we're going to write as plus xy. And then last, which is plus y squared, and that's where we get Mr. FOIL. So reducing that or simplifying that a little bit, I just get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now, before we look at x plus y quantity cubed, we want to take a look at what this looks like combinatorially. And when I say combinatorially, I mean we're looking at how we can choose the number of ways to get x squared or to get xy and so forth. So for instance, to get x squared, there's just one way to do it, and that's to take x from each of the pairs. However, if I'm going to take xy, I could get x from the first and y from the second, or x from the second and y from the first. So that's where we're going to get that two combinatorily. And then of course, with y squared, it's just one way taking y from each, um, each of the pairs. Now let's take a look at x plus y quantity cubed, which I'm just going to take this result and take it times x plus y. So I'm going to distribute the x. So x cubed plus 2x squared y plus xy squared. And then I'm going to distribute the y. So x squared y plus 2xy squared plus y cubed. And then I'm going to simplify. So I've got x cubed. I've got 2xy, 2x squared y and another x squared y. So that's 3x squared y. I've got xy squared and 2xy squared. So that's 3xy squared. And then I've got y cubed. Again, looking at that combinatorially, the only way to get x cubed is just to take the x from each. But now we've got a lot of ways that we can find x squared y because I can take the two x's and the y. I could take an x and a y and an x, or I can take a y and an x and an x. So that's where we get all three of those, and then so on and so forth. So we get the idea. So now we're going to take a look at the binomial theorem. Um, but before we do, I just want to point out that there's a 1, a 3, a 3, and a 1. And this will make sense in our next video when we talk about Pascal's triangle. So finally, we are at the binomial theorem. The binomial theorem says if you have x plus y to the nth power, that is the same as taking the summation. So that's why we reviewed that summation notation. The index will go from 0 to n, so whatever that last value is, and then n choose i, and then x to the n minus i, y to the i. So this is just another representation of that, obviously symbolically, but let's go ahead and take a look at x plus y squared that we just found together. That tells me I'm going from 0 to two of n choose i. So n again was b2 choose i. And then we had x to the n minus i, y to the i. So what does that tell me to do? That says start at zero. The first term is two choose zero. And then it would be x so I'm right here, x to the 2 minus i, so 2 minus 0, and then y to the i, and again, i is 0, so y to the 0. And then we move on to i is equal to 1. So if i is equal to 1, it's 2 choose 1, and then x to the 2 minus 1, which is 1, and y to the i, which is 1 and then move on to two, so two choose two, and then x to the two minus two, so x to the zero, y to the two. So 
what does that tell me? Well, two choose zero. There's only one way to choose. And that gives me x squared and then y to the zero, so we're not going to write that. And then two choose one is two. Remember, we just talked about this. This is two factorial over one factorial, one factorial, two minus one factorial, which is one factorial. So that gives me two and then x to the first, y to the first. And then two choose two, again, two factorial over two factorial, zero factorial, that's going to give me one. X to the zero again is one and then y squared. So really I just got x squared plus two xy plus y squared, which if you'll recall, was what we got when we foiled this out. I can do the same thing for cubed and get the same result. I don't, I'm not going to do that just for the sake of time in this video, but that's all this mumbo jumbo is telling you is essentially this value is going to keep increasing. So two n choose zero and choose one and choose two and so on until you've made it to the end of the list and your exponent on your x value is going to start at n and continue to decrease by one. Your y value is going to start at zero and continually increase by one until you reach n. Let's look at two uh, traditional practice or typical practice using the binomial theorem, and these are just direct application of the binomial theorem. So the first one asks us to just find an expansion. So again, we're just going to be using the summation. So n obviously is four, and we're starting at i is zero, so we're saying four choose zero, and then the first term to the fourth power and the second term, which different this time is not a y, but is an actual constant, and that's going to be to the zero power. So I'm just going to write it all out initially. And again, the x value, the exponent is going to decrease by one, the, th the y value, which in this case is three, the exponent is going to increase by one. And then we'll do some simplification. So that's supposed to be a two, four choose two, x squared, three squared, and then four choose three, decrease x by one, increase three by one, and then four choose four, and then x to the zero, three to the fourth. All right, so now let's take a look at how we can reduce this. So obviously, yes, I wrote the expansion, but this would not be um, an acceptable solution because I haven't re uh, reduced anything or made it pretty, I guess. So four choose zero is one. But if you'll notice here, I also have to take into account that I've got another um, number, not variable. So three to the zero is one. So that gives me one times x to the fourth. So x to the fourth is my first term. Four choose one is four. But again, I've got four and I've got three choose one, which is three. So this is actually 12 x to the third. And then four choose two. Remember, all we're doing to find those solution is four factorial, two factorial, four minus two factorial. That's going to give me six. So if you don't recall that, make sure you go back to the combinations video. Um, this would be six, but then this guy is nine. So six times nine is 54 x squared. Again, four choose three is going to end up as four. And then three to the third is 27. So we're going to multiply that out to get 108 X. And then four choose four is one and three to the fourth is 81. So that gives me plus 81 and X to the zero as we know is just one. So that is the expansion. And again, that might not seem like a fast way to find the solution, but it's a lot faster than having to foil everything out and then distribute and then distribute some more and combine like terms. The other type of question that you'll get most often is one where they ask you just to find the coefficient. So again, it's going to be the same idea as what we just did, but we're only going to focus on 
the coefficient for one value. Um, the biggest mistake that I see students make here is again forgetting that if you've got numbers like we did here, you have to take those numbers into account when finding the coefficient. So what I'm going to do here is essentially you're going to take the 12 plus 3 to find that n is 15. So it's 15, those will always add up to n. So 15 choose and it's going to be whatever the second value is. So 15 choose 3 is the first part of our solution. And then the first value, in this case 2, so it's 2x, but again, I'm only looking for the coefficient, so I don't care about the x. I only care about the 2. I'm going to take 2 to the 12th power, and I'm going to take negative 3. Again, I could put the y in there, but I don't care. Negative 3 to the third power. And then I'm just going to use my calculator. So you can find each part um, separately, 455, um, 4096, negative 27, and then multiply those out, or you can just get your calculator out and do it all. And either way, you're going to end up with, let me write it down before I say it so I don't screw it up, negative 50,319,360. So again, very large number, but made very easy by using the binomial theorem. I do want to take it just a step further and do a quick informal proof. So I'm not going to write out all of the steps. I'm just going to give you an idea of how we can use the binomial theorem in a proof like this. So what we're asked to prove is that the summation as k goes from zero to n of n choose k is equal to two n. So if you'll notice, this part of our expression closely matches this part of our expression. So how is that helpful to me? Well, because I can say that 1 plus 1 to the nth power is the summation as i goes from 0 to n of n choose i and then 1 uh, to the n minus i times 1 to the i. Well, 1 to any power is 1, and 1 to any power is 1, so really these don't matter. But what we're saying is 1 plus 1, which is 2, 2 to the n is equal to the summation as i goes from 0 to n of n choose i. Well, does that look a heck of a lot like this? Yes. So instead of using i, they're using k, but we can see using the binomial theorem, let's just call it k instead, starting at 0 and then to n of n choose k is in fact going to be equal to 2 to the nth power because of the binomial theorem. So again, not a formal proof because I didn't write everything out, but we can see that this is in fact going to hold true. In a similar way, we could prove these other corollaries, the summation as k goes from zero to n of negative one to the k, n choose k is equal to zero. Again, you can sort of rationalize that and say, okay, you're going to end up with negative one plus one, negative one plus one, negative one plus one. It's going to make sense that you would end up um, with zero. And then, uh, the summation as k goes from 0 to n of 2 to the k, and then n choose k is going to give you 3 to the n. Again, I'm leaving those for you to prove on your own. Up next, we're going to take a look at Pascal's identity and triangle.